Being the lead TV commentator analyst for Mecham Auctions on television now, can you believe it, in our 15th year of television, it goes all the way back to 2008. But for the first year, we are now on Motor Trend, both on Motor Trend TV and on Motor Trend Plus, the streaming service. And we have a multi-year contract with them, and it has been a match made in heaven. Uh, our ratings so far for the year, we've had four televised auctions so far this year, are up almost double from where they were uh, compared to last year when we were on NBCSN. And by the way, the reason we made the jump is because NBCSN went off the air, they went dark, they just canceled the channel, they're putting all their eggs in their Peacock streaming basket. We wanted to be on an actual cable channel, and Motor Trend scooped us up, and we could not be happier with that. Uh, in addition to uh, the television show, I'm full-time as part of the MECA management team. My official title is Director of Company Relations, basically I'm the company spokesperson, uh, and I'm also involved in uh, some of the steering directions that the way the company has gone. Also do a podcast called On The Move. If you go to Mecham.com, click on the homepage, do that with a colleague, Matt Avery, and I write a monthly column in the Mecham Monthly called At The Red Line, and that's available to be viewed for free, once again, uh, for free at the Mecham website. So what I'm gonna do now uh, is I want you to just sit back and enjoy about a three minute video that our friends and our colleagues at Motor Trend put together during our big Kissimmee auction this year. I'll see you in about three minutes. The Megum Auctions has been around for, I believe this is our 34th year now, it started in 1988 by Dana and Patty Meekham at their kitchen table <laughs> and has grown into what we see as the spectacle that we call Meekham Auctions. Our family has been in the car business for over 60 years. My grandpa was in the used car wholesale business and my dad always had a passion for Corvettes, sports cars. It's real simple economics. There's a lot more people in there's cars. And I think once you get that bug and you're around cars, you just love them. And they held their first auction in Rockford, Illinois. It is interesting to have Dana's four boys working with us in the business. And I remember those boys when they were hanging around the auctions when they were five years old. I didn't even realize learning the things I learned just from being around my grandpa and my dad. Spending time as a kid out on the auction block, putting sold stickers on cars as they came across the block. Our parrot used to answer the phone for making auctions. He would hear my dad say it so much. The phone would ring and the parrot would say, Make auctions! And now here they are running the auction themselves. They're passionate about automobiles and passionate about auctions. The Kissimmee Auction is the world's largest collector car auction. We literally build a city in Kissimmee, Florida for a two week auction. Mika Auctions is regularly referred to as a well oiled machine. It's really more like a rock concert. You know, you can watch them on TV, but coming to the auction in person is a whole different experience. We want everybody to come experience a brand of excitement, a brand of service. They're selling car every 90 seconds. We love automobiles so much that we want to let everybody know. It's exciting. You get to bring this energy to the room. We want everybody that comes to our auction to feel like they're a part of the human family. And it's something we've always been proud of. My vision in the future is to carry on the legacy. I'm very proud of what my grandfather and my dad have built. When I first heard that we were taking our television show to Motor Trend, I was overjoyed. <laughs> The merging, the blending of Meekham Auctions with Motor Trend is one of those perfect win-win situations. This is a partnership across all types of media. Five million, two million, five hundred. Kissimmee, let's hear it. Go! Two million. With all of the influx of new bidders, new customers, the brand growing, we kind of got that feeling where the fire business are going to open up now, and we're just going to be full steam ahead. Seeing the future of Meekham continue to grow, bringing that next big thing to the collector car hobby, and to be able to do that with a partner like Motor Trend is, is something real special. The sky's the limit with Meekham and Motor Trend partner.
Well, I hope you've enjoyed the little orientation to what Mecham Auctions is all about. And you know, if you, if I want to take away any one single point, and that is, other than the dedication of, of the 300 plus people it takes to put on one of these auctions, 45 of us in the television uh, end of it alone, but it's the, it's the family connection. It's Dana's four boys, their kids, now they've got children that are working their way into the business as well. Uh, it's a Midwest company with the old-fashioned work ethic of a handshake and a promise, and it seems to have paid off well as since I've been with Beacom since 2006, we have grown to be the world's largest collector car auction company by a huge margin. And it doesn't matter what parameter that you compare it to, if it's total dollar volume generated, last year it was over $600 million, another new record, uh, number of auctions held, number of cars across the block, all of that, we are number one and gaining. Uh, so on behalf of everybody at Mecham Auctions, uh, from the Mecham family, the executive team, all the way right down to the people that push the cars and everybody in between, uh, thank you so much for allowing Mecham Auctions to be a part of GTOA. Now, I have been a member of GTOA since 1988, and that, in fact, that was the first year that I actually attended a national event. I happen to still own my 1964 GTO that I bought back in July of 1976. When I was 19 years old, I still own it today. So these cars are nothing new to me. I grew up in LA. My dad sold new Pontiacs at a well-known Pontiac dealership called Harry Maher Pontiac on Lancashire. Uh, probably best known for uh, the fact that that was the used car lot used in the movie Psycho, uh, Alfred Hitchcock's movie 1960, seriously, if you remember that movie and that scene where she pulls into trade at her Ford for a newer Ford so she can uh, kind of get, get underneath the radar, although there was that policeman across the street watching her. That was filmed right there at that uh, Harry Maher uh, car lot, although Ford was a sponsor at that time of uh, Alfred Hitchcock, so they had to move all the Pontiacs out. I was, this was before I was there, but they moved the Pontiacs out and put Fords in there. But if you watch the movie, you ever see it again and stop framing, you can see the background, the uh, pennants and the banners in the background that are clearly Pontiac. And are you ready for this? Vauxhall. The captive import that Pontiac used for a couple years prior to the introduction of the Tempest. That dealership exists today, not as a Pontiac store, as we know. It is Universal City, BMW, and Mini. So there you go. <laughs> Welcome to the new world. So my love of Pontiacs uh, and cars in general began at a very, very young age. In fact, my mother used to tell the story that when I was about two years old, uh, I had a fascination with cars. We'd go out in the car and I'd be, my head would be spinning around looking at all the cars. And she said that she recalled the very first word that I said was pointing at cars and identifying cars. And I hope this doesn't offend anybody. Uh, I know what kind of a world we're in now, but according to her, of course I don't remember, this would have been in the late 50s, uh, she said I had a preoccupation with Ford Thunderbirds. Well, who, you know, who didn't admire the Ford Thunderbirds from the 1950s? So she said every time I would see a Thunderbird, I would say, Titty Bird, Titty Bird. <laughs> I said, I'm not quite sure if it's true, but she told the story so many times uh, that I've kind of adopted it as gospel. Eventually, um, I had decided very early on that Pontiacs and GTOs were going to be a big part of my personal life. And right up until the end of Pontiac in 2010, this would be over 40 years, myself and my family drove Pontiacs exclusively during that time period. And the demise of Pontiac, of course, in 2010 still affects me today. I knew it was coming. And now that it's been, what, 12 years ago, it just it doesn't seem likely that the car that in the 60s reached its peak, number three in sales, right behind Chevy and Ford, and of course so sought after today, uh, unfortunately is gone. I want to point out a couple of folks that are in the group here right now that are actually going to be speaking today. First one, uh, both are friends and folks I have massive respect for. Um, we'll start with Jim Madison in the back of the room. Jim's going to come on at 1 o'clock. He's waving to everybody. Of course, uh, well known for the force behind PHS. So you want to stick around for him. And another guy that has done so much for the Pontiac world that it's, I don't know where he gets the time and the energy. It's Tim Dye, uh, right here in the blue shirt, giving a wave. Uh, had a chance to spend some time with Tim uh, down at his facility in Pontiac, along with the Pontiac Museum. 
and I'm just always astounded at his level of knowledge and interest and energy to keep putting together great displays. If any folks have not been down there to see that, on Route 66, by the way, in Pontiac, Illinois, uh, it is worth even going out of your way completely transport itself into a completely different time zone. And of course, a brand new facility opening up in Pontiac, Michigan as well. I'm not sure what the timetable of that is, but he's a busy guy and he's also the guy that puts out the great magazine uh, for the folks at Pokey. Speaking of Pokey, I just, I'm curious to raise a hand since it's going to be in two weeks. Who's going to be there heading off to that event? One, two, three, four, about maybe four or five. Maybe. Great, I'll see everybody there in a couple of weeks. Also a member of that club as well for a long time. And just a final note before I get into Meekum Auctions, I just really want to stress my admiration and my appreciation to everybody at G2A, starting from uh, Tom Oxler, your uh, club president, uh, his management team. They are incredibly passionate and hardworking to put these events together. Not sure if many of you realize that uh, it's just now, I believe, in the second year where the actual club executive team actually runs and manages the national conventions as opposed to turning it over to a local chapter. This has been a kind of a radical way that they um, found it easier for some, easier for the chapters to be involved, but obviously much more difficult for your for your officers. So if you see any of those folks, if you know any of them, if you don't, a pat on the back, a handshake for their continued efforts to put together these incredible events, and also, I just want to say that the that that, that the footing of G2AA, the actual strength and the core of the members uh, and the financial situation of the club is very solid. They've really done a good job of steering this big ship, and that's important. That's important for a couple reasons. One, so we have the opportunity to come and hang out and show off our cars and meet new people and hear all the car stories. That's a big, big component of it. But the other part of it is keeping the memories and the stories alive. As we all move forward, people say we need more young people in the collector car hobby. Uh, I've been hearing that for about 30 years, by the way. That's kind of always been the mantra. And I always tell people, especially from my view and my perch as the guy sitting there on TV hour after hour after hour, day after day after day, day watching and studying the trends and who the buyers are, that there has been an evolution to a younger buyer. And it might surprise you what I define as a younger buyer. And that's probably somebody around 50 years old, not somebody 20 or 30. So we all have the opportunity uh, when we show our cars, talk about our cars, attend events like this, to promote the enjoyment, the social aspect, and of course the actual love of the actual hardware. How we feel when we're behind the wheel, how we feel when we go out to the garage and we look at our car, we wax it, or we put a new part on. That's all part, it's difficult to describe, and I know I'm preaching the choir, but to try to explain that and talk about that and keep that that good feeling. People ask me all the time about investments. You know, what should I buy as an investment? And I've never once looked at, I have a small, modest collection of cars, not just my GTO, I've got some other cars. And I've never looked at it from an investment standpoint, although they have always seemed to have, over time, have proven out to be a good investment, although that's a secondary benefit. But as a, as a main purpose, I guess it is an investment. I call it the investment in the enjoyment of life. And to me, that's what owning these cars and interacting with folks like you, being around people of like-minded interests, uh, not living in the past, but not shy and afraid to go dip our toe in it every once in a while and relive those good old days, or at least what we thought were the good old days. So anyway, hats off to all you folks for being, being a member, for allowing Meekum Auctions to be a sponsor. And a final note before I get into a little bit nuts and bolts about how Meekum Auction works, and then I'll open it up for some questions and answers after that. Um, uh, I just do want to say that if you have the opportunity for your specific car to get it judged, and I know the concourse judging is going on as we speak, literally right now, there's probably no single better thing that you can do to your car and for the future of your car and the future of the hobby is to go ahead and get the car judged, keep all that paid. This is for the ego or for any trophy or plaque you hang on the wall. Our cars deserve the recognition and the respect that uh, having judges working off of a neutral uh, judging standard uh, is, is huge. And yes, it does add value to the cars, but more importantly, it helps preserve a part of the history. 
And so if you're thinking about it, but you're not sure about the time and the expense of jumping through all the hoops to get that done, over time it has proven to be very, very worthwhile. So anyway, um, let's talk a little bit about Mecham Auctions. Let me begin by saying, why auctions? You know, there's a lot of choices out there, a lot of different options on how to sell or buy a collector vehicle. But it seems like in the past 10 to 20 years, collector car auctions, excuse me, Beacom, of course, leading the charge as being the world's largest. But there's another auction company out there that's also on television. I always forget their name. <laughs> but they're out there too. And I think what's happened is, is it's really put, it's really put auctions into the public mainstream. It's really now gone outside of the collector car world and out into just the general entertainment mainstream. And it's brought new people and new interests into vintage cars. Hearing about the history and the stories and seeing the high prices and uh, learning about the cars and learning about the history and how you can connect the dots between, let's just say, a mid 1960s Shelby Mustang and a contemporary Shelby Mustang and how all that works has really done a lot for this hobby. And it's been, I think, the collector car auctions and other televised automotive shows, the build-it shows and others that has helped to promote, I guess is the word, the enjoyment of collector cars or vintage cars or late model cars that have had some type of modification or personalization. There's a lot of ways to look at it. We talk a lot about vintage cars within the auction environment, but the reality is, is we do late model cars, we do vintage cars, we do cars that are over 100 years old, we do cars that are original, we do cars that are restored, we do cars that are modified, it's A to Z. We do European exotics now, that's become a big part of what we do, but it's all because that's really what the landscape, and that's what, that's what our buyers and our sellers are telling us that they want, the full range of cars. Mid-50s to the early 1970s continues to represent the bulk of collector vehicles, and especially the cool vehicles, the performance cars, the Corvettes now, of course, We've got vintage trucks and SUVs, C10 Chevys and Broncos. Where did that phenomenon come from? I didn't see it coming, but it's here and more than likely not going anywhere. But we've embraced it and we've welcomed it because anything we can do to continue to promote and advance car collecting, the interests of it, at Mecham, not just from a business model standpoint, we're gonna continue to do that. So, um, Obviously, the scope and the variety of the entries is different now than it was 10 years ago, and probably 10 years from now that will also take an evolution. But I will tell you that the core of the collector vehicle market is really going to be, and I think as we move into the future, is really going to stay within that mid 1950s to that early 1970s time point for a variety of reasons, if nothing else, because they're easy to work on compared to the later cars where you get more electronics and big heavy bumpers and all that stuff and the small controls, all that stuff as we started going to the 1970s. But just as importantly, maybe something you haven't thought of is the fact that there are reproduction parts available now for so many of those vehicles, including, I mentioned the C10 Chevy and the Broncos, of course, GTOs and Mustangs and Corvettes and uh, Challengers and Cudas have had a variety of those items available for many years. But now that's expanding into some of these other markets, and that gives an opportunity for somebody to take one and restore it or personalize it to their taste. And so the bottom line on that topic is uh, we've got some of the sponsors here at this event, uh, including the guys at uh, MPD and Ames that support the club, that are sponsors, put money into these events, and they ought to be your first, your first choice when it comes to getting parts for your car. You ought to give those guys the business because Again, talk about business model, they obviously they want the business, but they're here and they're supporting it because a lot like you enthusiasts that own the cars, they're passionate as well. It's not just a job, it's not just commerce. You know, I didn't, you know, this is cool. I, I, didn't, I didn't have to be here, nobody told me, hey, you know, go to GTOA. I asked to go, I made sure that my schedule was clear. It isn't so much to spread the word about Mecham Auctions, it's to, it's to be there and to be immersed in the hobby as a part of the hobby, uh, to share a little bit of my knowledge, but a lot of my enthusiasm for just such a, how big of a part and a satisfying part of life owning collector vehicles are. And it doesn't necessarily have to be GTOs or Pontiacs or anything, it could be any specific type or a variety of types.